2018 was the best of times and it was the meh of times. So let's quantify it, shall we? I'm Chris Wolver, the wrestling vlogger who always tells it like it is. Two days before the year kicks the bucket, so it's high time I give it the once over twice, one for each brand. And give you what I feel was the best and worst of 2018. Now just like everything else I do on this column, these are my picks, my criteria. If you have different opinions, you are more than welcome to them. Just know that I'm that mine are correct, okay? Let's start with the best cruiserweight. You can only go to Cedric Alexander. Ever since he won the ugly purple belt at WrestleMania after it was vacated by the certified jerk and bonafide schmuck. Cedric went on a tear through the 205 Live locker room. He helped show the WWE that maybe the Cruiserweights belong on the main pay-per-view cards instead of kickoffs. It hasn't really happened yet, but with those like Cedric around, it's only a matter of time. Best match. Normally I'd pick one for Raw and one for SmackDown, but in this case I have to go with the greatest Royal Rumble match. Well, let's face it, I love that type of match. And with 50 superstars from across the map, Daniel Bryan lasting over 75 minutes and Braun Strowman chucking out 13 to break Roman Reigns' record, how can this not be my pick? Worst matches. For Raw, it's Matt Howardy versus Bray Wyatt in the Ultimate Deletion. You know, this reminds me of the House of Horrors match last year, and that was the last match I wanted to be reminded of. <clears throat> Pardon. It was ridiculous, and everything in the compound was to try and fail to make it more interesting. It was essentially a hardcore title match, and we had enough of that stuff from the turn of the century. Where SmackDown match was Asuka versus James Ellsworth. Why was James even brought back? What was his purpose save to help Carmella hold on to her title? And right after that Lumberjill match with Asuka, he was gone again. This was a low point for Asuka, and I'm so glad she rose above it. Best Raw feud. The Shield versus Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and Braun Strowman. Yeah, it didn't last long, but it was short and brutal like some of the better feuds these days. To see the Shield reunited, if only for a brief time, it, that was worth it. And even after Strowman and Roman Reigns left, I still had hopes for continuing, if not for Dean Ambrose doing this to Seth Rollins, or Rollins did to Ambrose nearly five years ago. Shame it ended like it did, but it was still awesome. Best SmackDown feud was AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Now, I argued this feud may have lasted a bit too long, but it's what set Samoa Joe as a, more of a mental fighter than just a hulking brute, not from Samoa. He got into Styles' head and made him flip. He got closer to taking the WWE title from Styles than anyone before him, including Shinsuke Nakamura. Good going, Joe. Triple H looks in your head games and th goes, wow. Worst feud of Raw was Baron Corbin versus Finn Balor. Look, I don't care if you p you're pissed at the general manager about how he does his job. The WWE Universe wants you to take that title you only held for 24 hours. Not that Corbin was selling this feud either. I mean, changing rules mid-match so that Finn would get his arse kicked. It gets old when it's done every damn match. It's Thank goodness it's more or less over with Corbin having to go back to sucking inside the ring. SmackDown's worst feud was the entire tag division, if you really want to call it that. Really, it was just the bar, the New Day, and <clears throat> the Usos a little later on. Only recently, Sanity and the Good Brothers finally had some say in the division. We needed fresh blood, y'all. The bar of the day and the useless should be pushing the new talent, not hogging the gold for themselves. Rookies of the year. Now, my de definition of rookie is someone who debuted on Raw or SmackDown 
this calendar year. And for Raw, it has to be Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Yeah, yeah, folks say she was handed the title, but if they really wanted that to happen, she would have been in a triple threat match with Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania. But they took the time to develop her style, get her used to the four-sided ring, before giving her that shot. And she didn't waste it. Sure, she's only been in pay-per-view matches and the Raws immediately after, but she's undefeated, so can't argue with that. For SmackDown, my rookie is Zelina Vega. Yeah, you heard me correctly. She's done better than what few people debuted on SmackDown this year, especially her charge, Andrade Cien Almas. Yeah, her only wins were against Alma, and even James Ellsworth could beat Lana, but she's still the most impressive rookie on SmackDown I've seen this year. Hope she gets more ring time. Most disappointing rookie up for Raw is No Way Jose. Anyone else got an Adam Rose vibe off of him when he first showed up? Conga line, party attitude, the generally not giving two craps about the match. After a few brief appearances on Raw, he was booted to the main event, and even then, he stunk. Will he come back soon? Mmm, doubtful. Most disappointing SmackDown rookies would be, of course, Sanity. I was hoping, I'm hoping they'll get better that now that they're being given a chance, but in 2018, I'm afraid they, they'd be a flash in the pan like No Way Jose. Young Wolf and Dane deserve the booking. Female Superstar of the Year, Raw is, again, Ronda Rousey. Sasha Banks is the boss. Bailey's still hugging it out. Ember Moon's climbing up the ranks. And no one is discounting Nia Jackson, her twin sister from another mother, Tamina. But again, Rousey has been pra beating practically everyone on the roster so far. So, yeah, deal with it. For SmackDown women, it's Asuka. We thought she'd beat Charlotte at WrestleMania, but when she didn't, well, we wondered about her, didn't we? She tried to be, beat Carmella, but was bummed by Ellsworth. Then she teamed with Naomi, and we worried how, long she, how low she'd sink. But lo and behold, at the first ever women's TLC match, she finally proved her worth. We'll see who's really ready for Asuka in 2019. Tag Team of the Year. On Raw, it was tough. So many slapped together teams, and only the AOP were a solid team that did well, but not quite as long. I decided to give it to the B team because, quite frankly, I didn't think the former Miz Taraj could handle it on their own. But Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel proved us wrong by holding the Raw tag titles for a decent amount of time. For this year, anyway. And all they had to do was Bo leave. As for SmackDown's Tag Team of the Year, I loathe to give the honor to the New Day. But despite the fact that I just said the division is stagnant, the New Day were the most entertaining of the teams, I just hope they don't become six-time champs anytime soon. Finally, the male superstars of the year. For Raw, the winner is Brock Lesnar. Psych! You honestly think I'd choose that part-timer? Hells no! The real Raw Superstar of the Year is a champ who actually showed up to work. Seth frickin' Rollins. Won the IC title, got it back when Ziggler stole it, won the Raw Tag titles even when Ambrose was prepping to betray him, and most of all, he defended the IC title whenever he could. And according to list this, he won the most televised matches this year, so of course he's... Numero uno on Raw. As for SmackDown, that goes to AJ Styles. First guy to hold the WWE Championship for over a year since Philip the Quitter Brooks in 2011. And he was always up for a challenge. Be it Jinder Mahal, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, or Samoa Joe, he rushed headlong into the matches and proved that SmackDown was the house that AJ Styles built. Not sure where he's going with this vicious streak Mr. McMahon slapped into him, but if he keeps fighting, he'll be Superstar of the Year for years to come. Like him? Don't like him? Want me to shut the hell up? Well, tough. 
These are who I think deserve my respect and our derision, and if you think I'm wrong, start your own damn vlog. Happy New Year. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Blog, who always tells it like it is. See ya.